there's not a very good understanding of how we process things. And so then that results in a lot of frustration for a lot of our customers. Uh, like one of the bigger things is like, why can't we store everything inside? So it has to do with space, essentially. Another one is just how quickly we can turn something around in terms of like if someone asks us to expedite something and they'll pay more and let's say they're a really good long-standing customer, we want to try to help them because it's a super important project for them and they do a lot of business with us. Uh, but sometimes they still don't, they don't understand why an expedite, even if we are expediting it, it doesn't get done as fast as they think it should. And then kind of going off of that, like just how does everything flow together to come up with like a really good day of production or a bad day of production? So when it comes to storing parts, there are a select set of customers that really do not want their parts stored outside ever. They want them inside the entire time that they're at our facility. And that becomes very difficult because we're typically always busy. So we have a lot of jobs and projects at our facility and they're always usually really really big and we just don't have the space to store everything inside I mean that's just all there is to it we're just we're out of space I mean it's not necessarily because our facility or buildings are small it's just we got a lot of stuff there so we try to be accommodating if we can if it's a smaller part that's pretty easy to store inside you know if it's a little tiny piece we can just store it up on a rack, but if it's really, really large piece, long, like 30 foot long, or a car frame, those tend to be more challenging to store inside. Now, if someone like walked around our shop at the end of the day when we're closing it up and they'd be like, well, there's all kinds of floor space in here. You could jam a ton of stuff inside overnight and then just take it back out in the morning. And that's true, but that's a lot of extra labor every single day to load the shop entirely full with everything. On average, if we did that, it probably would take two, two to four hours. And that's not an exaggeration. And then in the morning, it would take two to four hours to get it back out. So that means we would have to have someone that was staying until for sure 7 p.m. every night. And we would have to have somebody coming in at about 2 a.m. in order to get everything in and out of the shops so that way we can work during the day so that's a lot of the reason why not everything is stored inside now if we've blasted something we're not going to put that back outside because then it's going to rust and obviously we're going to have to re-blast it so once we start actually working on the project it's typically staying inside until it's finished if it was powder coated for or liquid coated for an exterior application once it were cured and packaged, then we probably would set, go ahead and feel comfortable setting outside because it's that's where its end use is gonna be anyway. So we try to work with customers as much as we can, but there are certain cases where we end up not doing a job or project because I can't promise that it'll be inside the entirety uh, that it's at our facility and the customer it's not okay with that, and that's okay. We just can't make it work on those particular situations. In terms of like how we process things through the shop, blasting the production schedule, I pretty much can move anything around. There aren't multiple plot processes that are playing off of each other. So if somebody wants something blasted in a hurry, and they're willing to pay an expedite fee, and they're also a long-term repetitive customer, ours we have a good long-standing relationship with it's not super challenging to move something to the front of the blasting schedule other than the fact that they're jumping other jobs that were already scheduled and promised to get done at a certain time when it comes to powder coating that gets really challenging because a lot of people think we just hang it powder coat but there's a whole process and the pretreatment portion is important, I and mean, that takes time. The shop is full of parts that we hang parts on so we can move them through all the processes. And those 
carts basically fill the entire shop. So they kind of just have to move in an assembly line fashion throughout the shop so we can actually process the parts. So it's hard to like leapfrog things. And what I mean by that is we have, I don't know the exact number, but let's just say 20 carts. Parts first get hung, then they get pre-treated, then they go into the dry off oven and then they're staged and they're waiting to be sprayed. Then they get sprayed, they go into the cure oven, they cure, they cool down, we package. So at all points of the day, there's always carts, a couple carts, one or two, that are open, meaning they're open for a short period of time and somebody's hanging parts on them. There are parts that are already hung and they're waiting to be some prep before the wash bay or they're just waiting to go into the wash bay to get pre-treated. And then there's parts that are in the oven drying and then there's parts sitting waiting to be sprayed and then there's parts that are out of the oven and cooled down and waiting to be packaged. So there's always parts at every stage of the process. So we had a perfect example happen on Friday. We had some parts come in at about 1.30 p.m. that um, a customer wanted to expedite and was willing to pay a fee and is a good long-standing customer of ours that we do a lot of business for. So we try to help them as much as we can. They wanted to have these parts ready uh, to ship by 8 a.m. Monday morning. So since we weren't working production this weekend, there's hardly any time between 1.30 p.m. and then 8 a.m. on Monday morning in terms of production time. I told them, hey, we're going to put it right to the front line. It will hang next, you know, and this is about 2 p.m. on Friday. The problem is, is just because we're hanging it next, it's probably not going to pre-treat until middle of the day on Monday or mid morning uh, because that's kind of where it is in the line and and there's already 12 ish carts that have already been pre-treated that are waiting to get sprayed and that's what we're going to be spraying pretty much all of Monday morning and into Monday afternoon and so even though we start working on these parts right when they showed up on Friday afternoon they're not going to get to the spray booth until probably late Monday which means that we're probably going to ship on Tuesday morning. And a lot of people don't necessarily understand. We're like, why can't you just put it right to the front? Can't you just, if you're going to hang it and pre-treat it, can't you just spray it right after that? And it's like, well, we, we can, but for one, it kind of messes up the flow and how we plan on doing it. And also, like, the colors matter, too. When we're not even going to be in that color, then kind of need to wait till that color's coming back up. Sometimes we can make it work out, meaning like since it was a Friday afternoon that this happened, uh, or we got it hung, then I utilized time over the weekend while I was there to reorganize everything, get them into the, so they're sitting in the wash bay, ready to pre-treat first thing on Monday. But again, you know, we're probably not spraying until late Monday afternoon. So typically, if we're doing an expedite and something shows up like late in the day on a Friday or even if it was a Thursday, it's going to be challenging for us to get it out the door in 24 hours unless we really have a lot of things that just kind of fall our way and work out. Pretty much everything's happening simultaneously. There's multiple people working at each phase of the process at once. And so it, it all kind of plays off of one another. It's hard to just leapfrog things and move things around because it just gets all out of order. And then what if we were expecting to have a ton of carts to package? Well, now we don't because we just change a ton of things around. A good day essentially is if we don't have any rework. A bad day is if we have a lot of rework. And, you know, rework a lot could be self-inflicted. We could have not pre-treated it well enough. We could have missed a spot when we powder coated it. But a lot of the time, it's just things that happen that are out of our control. Something falls in the powder, a piece of debris falls in the powder, and it looks terrible, so we have to rework it. The powder itself has something in it. There's white specks in our black powder for some reason, um, so there's powder contamination. That's kind of out of our control. Something weird with the substrate it's boiled out while it was in the oven curing, even though that we pre-treated it really well and there was really no visual greaser oils on the part. 
Um, and so that all that stuff causes rework. And when we have to do rework, obviously that we have to go back through the entire process and reprep it, repre-treat it, dry it again, spray it again. And so if we're doing a lot of parts twice, we're doing a lot of rework, then that's obviously going to be a bad day for production. Good days are when everything just kind of flows well and no rework, but also things just kind of go according to how I expected. Things take the amount of time that our data shows that they should. So that means that there's always something to package, that there's always carts ready to hang, there's always carts to pre-treat, and there's always carts to spray. Sometimes we get a hang up or a hold up at one of our processes and we get bottled up in one area. Then all of a sudden, like maybe we don't have anything to hang for a couple hours because we got bottled up at the spray booth. We kind of run out of stuff to do on the shop floor for a little while because we're waiting on the sprayers, sprayer or sprayers, to get carts coated so we can cure them and get them out so we can package them and then rehang them and kind of keep going in that whole cycle or flow of the process. If there's hang-ups, which they happen, uh, probably, you know, every couple days we have a, a bottleneck that happens. It could be because I scheduled poorly or just something happens. Typically, rework causes those bottlenecks. And then we kind of have to scramble and readjust the production schedule so we can kind of keep that whole cycle moving along.